today, by the power of Strava, we're racing two pros, Phil Guyman and Sean Quinn. So you suck. Up three of my favorite climbs right here in Griffith Park. Yes, the weather is suddenly gloomy and I'm wearing a different outfit. That will all make sense in just a second. But first, Strava is an app for masochists that lets you compare your fastest times on a segment of road against other cyclists. And since Los Angeles is home to several pro cyclists, it's probably not a surprise. The Strava leaderboards get pretty competitive. The winner of each segment is dubbed king or queen of the mountain. And as a reward, they get a little crown next to their name. And I can guarantee you, people have lost their sanity chasing those little crowns. 44 seconds. Not the KOM, but just a few spots above me with the exact same time is Sean Quinn, a world tour cyclist who just won stage two of Copi e Bartali with a sprint finish. So I feel pretty good about that one. All right, here we are at the Ferndale ascent. Phil Guyman has a KOM on Ferndale with a blazing fast time of four minutes, 12 seconds. I tried to keep up with his pace for as long as I could using the Strava Live segment feature, but he dropped me within the first quarter mile. Two seconds behind. 12. All right, well, it doesn't matter, we're dropped. And it wasn't the first time Phil dropped me. Last year, he dropped me while I was filming him taking a KOM in Woodland Hills. I was on an e-bike. So this is the first glimpse that uh, it would not be an easy day for, for Mitch, who was How do Phil and I compare on a normal ride? Here's one little section of a ride we did after Phil completed a KOM effort. This ride was a solid endurance pace for me, but if you look at Phil's power and heart rate for him, this was a recovery ride. So no surprise on Ferndale, nowhere near his time. In fact, I was struggling to beat my own previous best time of six minutes, 29 seconds. I can't even beat my own PR. So after hating myself for about 10 minutes, I decided I would redeem myself on the third hill, Coco's trash truck. My previous best time was two minutes, 54 seconds. And I did that a year ago. All right. I need some help. So you suck. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the good news is, uh, here's your compliment. It's not that bad. Phil is a friend and was one of the best climbers in the world during his pro career. Now, as a retired pro, he probably holds more KOMs than anyone else in Los Angeles, including those last two that I just did. So I asked him to look at my efforts and give me some tips. Yeah, I can feel this and I can feel your observatory effort. Did you go to trails for a cookie in between at least? I didn't, that was okay. probably that's a That's a tip and trick. Any effort, the I have the rule of thirds. The first third, assuming that the gradient is, is steady, you wanna be thinking in your head, thinking easy. And then the middle third, you're gonna think, here's <laughs> Mitch retching. Um, the middle third, you wanna think, steady uh, and then the final third is when you want to now it can feel like it's hard um, if that's a perceived exertion your power file will actually be flat you can see all of phil's tips in the video that we made on his channel and if you want to get faster on the segment you've been chasing it's definitely worth watching the entire thing with phil's tips fresh in my mind i was ready to try again right now we're headed to the first segment observatory climb west now in the past i might have filmed those three segments and then made a video out of just that, telling a story about how it's okay to not always improve. And while that's true, it doesn't make a great story. And this year, I'm really trying to take my content to the next level, so here we are. There's a catch though. If I don't improve my times this time, I'm in trouble because next week I'm headed out of the country. I'm going to New Zealand to ride the steepest street in the world. You can cycle up it. Mm. It's not the world's steepest street. It absolutely is. And as exciting as that is, I haven't been able to like savor in it yet because I'm so focused on this mission. So you can see why I'm not leaving anything up to chance. I'm taking all of the help I can get. If you watch some of my other videos, you might recall I've been supplementing my carbs with ketone IQ during my base training rides. I don't know why I was trying to hold these. I saw an improvement in my performance, so when they reached out about sponsoring a few videos on the channel, I was happy to partner with them. For high intensity exercises, I've been using Ketone IQ after my workouts 
as part of my recovery protocol. There are several studies that suggest adding ketones to your post-workout recovery drink will boost the effects of carbs and restore glycogen and protein to trigger muscle growth and repair. Basically, take ketones, get stronger. But what about ketones during high intensity exercise, like what I'm doing today? Traditionally, people have been worried that might inhibit glycolysis, but I had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Lat Manser, the research lead at HVNM, and he told me about a few exciting studies for athletes using exogenous ketones before high intensity exercise. I don't know how much I can share because the studies aren't published yet, but he did offer a protocol that I could, you know, try for myself. Two bottles of Ketone IQ, 90 minutes before the start of my first high intensity interval. So, so 90 minutes from now, I'm gonna be riding up Observatory Climb West. Dr. Manser also offered to answer any questions you have. Drop your ketone related questions in the comments. And I know a lot of you have already been asking about ketones, so this is your opportunity. In addition to optimizing my nutrition, I'm optimizing my setup. I got a secret weapon. Hunt sent over these wheels. These are their super lightweight climbing wheels, the aerodynamicist. Carbon spokes, they come in at like 1200 grams for the pair, which is ridiculous. I'm gonna put them on my bike right now, um, but you know what we have to do. We have to weigh the bike before and after. 7.995 kilos. Look at that. 7.72 kilos. Dang. All right, but why stop there? I'm also gonna wax my chain. From what I've read, the chain is fastest within the first hour of waxing it. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but again, I'm gonna use everything I can to get the, because dude, if I don't beat my PRs, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yes! Did it. <laughs> oh! Look who beat Sean Quinn, current world tour cyclist. That's right, I did. Of course, his effort is from 2016 when he was 16 years old. But a win is a win. A win is a win. A win is a win. I don't care what y'all say. A win is a win. Okay, now perhaps the most important piece of advice that Phil gave me is this. Get a cookie at trails. I'm pretty sure this is the entire reason why I failed last time. Mm. Brown butter. For my fellow cycling nerds, my chain rings are 5236 on 170 mil cranks, and then I have an 11 to 34 cassette in the back. We're taking a, a line out of Vegan Cyclist book. I saw this on the Nero show, and I thought I'd give it a try. I don't know how you ride events with this thing in your mouth, but Whatever, I get it. It's uh, it's definitely the most lightweight solution. Now, of course, I forgot to turn on my Wahoo screen record feature for this effort, so I don't have that cool little graphic in the corner. I guess this is a good time to highlight everything I did between the first set of efforts and the second set of efforts to improve my time. Most importantly, I've been training hard with my coach, Ryan Thomas, at the Road Cycling Academy, and I took an easy week before the second set of efforts. For technique, talking with Phil did wonders, especially his rule of thirds. That really helped me pace these efforts. I did the new Ketone IQ protocol that Dr. Lad Manser told me. I put on Silka's Aero Socks. I wore my favorite kit from Le Club. I had the new wheels that I got from Hunt. I put on new tires, the Schwalbe Pro Ones. All of these things combined resulted in this. <sighs> yes. Two down. Hell yeah.
I think I got it. I have no idea though, because this Strava Live segment wasn't working. <sighs> So today we learned if you push yourself really, really hard, you can get fractionally faster and still be miles away from the pros. Maybe Phil had a good point. When someone says they, they want to improve, they want to get super fast, I'm always kind of like, why? I think everyone should have fun and enjoy your bike ride. Nah, I'll just find a small KOM that nobody knows about and smash it up that one. Ah, I didn't get the KOM. Second place. So it turns out if you tie with the previous record holder on Strava, oh, you man. still get second place. I worked so hard and I got beat by a cat. <laughs>